Praise the Lord. Before we go to the Word, let us praise and worship the Lord. Amen. To the O Lord, do I lift up my soul? Unto the O Lord, do I lift up my soul? Oh my God, I trust in Thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph. Over me, show me thy way, show me thy way, thy way is alone, thy way is alone, teach me thy path, teach me thy path, thy path is alone, thy path is alone, oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Remember now, remember now the sins of my youth. The sins of my youth. Remember now, remember now the sins of my youth. The sins of my youth. Oh my God, oh my God, I trust. That not my enemies triumph over me. Where could I go? Where could I go? Seeking refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to help me. To the Lord, stooping to low in this old sinful world, hardly a comfort can afford. Striving alone to face temptation sore. I go back to the Lord. Where could I go? 
peace and joy to all of you in Jesus name. I am Brother Marlon welcoming you to our Wednesday English Bible study at Evangel Assembly of God, Durham, North Carolina, USA. We are starting another topic tonight. Cannot be shaken the kingdom of God. Kindly read aloud with me our main text in Hebrews chapter 12 verses 25 to 28. And I'm reading from the King James Version. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escaped not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he had promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. We will study Hebrews chapter 12 verses 25 to 28 in two parts. Part 1 that will be tonight and part 2 next Wednesday. You see, God has been speaking. He spoke in the past and speaking in the present. In both the past and the present times, He has been warning people of the day that He will shake not the earth only, but also heaven. Now let us review recent disastrous events this half of 2020. As we look at its image, let us ask God prayerfully, What are you saying, Lord? What are you saying? In June 23, 2020, a 7.5 magnitude earthquake shook southern and central Mexico, collapsing buildings and prompting evacuations. What are you saying, Lord? In January 12, 2020, the eruption of Paal Volcano in Batangas, Philippines. More than 30,000 people have fled their homes. What are you saying, Lord? There's a website named Strange Sounds that records amazing, odd, and unexpected phenomena happening around the world. In April 22, 2020, they recorded 45 ongoing eruptions from 52 volcanoes. What are you saying, Lord? In July 5, 2020 in Japan, flooding and landslides left at least 35 people confirmed or presumed dead. What are you saying, Lord? In March 20, 2020, the bush fires in Australia burned 12.6 million acres. In Phoenix, Arizona, June 16 to 18, 2020, 193,455 acres burned. What are you saying, Lord? In China, the Chinese Communist Party, under the leadership of President Xi Jinping, closed churches, jailing pastors, and even rewriting scripture. CBN News reported hundreds of thousands of churches 
are victims of communist China's ongoing crackdown. What are you saying, Lord? In May 17, 2020, in Nigeria, 620 killed by Boko Haram to Lani. What are you saying, Lord? In China, in January 2020, where the COVID-19 started in Wuhan, China, now the worldwide statistics is over 548,000 deaths, 12 million cases. What are you saying, Lord? In May 27, 2020, in India, coronavirus battered India is now battling a plague of locals. The media has reported that about 123,500 acres of crop land have already been destroyed. In Kenya, June 2020, trillions, I repeat, trillions of the locals have been destroying crops from Kenya through Ethiopia, Yemen, even as far as parts of northern India. What are you saying, Lord? In Minneapolis, May 25, 2020, George Floyd, a 46-year-old black man, was killed in Minneapolis, Minnesota, sparked nationwide protest and has estimated damages over 500 million. What are you saying, Lord? They even pulled down monuments, statues of George Washington, Ulysses Grant, Columbus, and other more. Now activists say statues of Jesus Christ are a gross form of white supremacy that they should be torn down. Had not Jesus said in Matthew 24 verse 35, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Here is the statistics of annual deaths. 56 million die per year. 4,679,452 per month, 153,424 per day, 6,392 per hour, 106 people die in a minute, and 1.80 seconds per second. That means every second one or two people dies. You are now looking at the world death clock. The last time I checked, there are 29,946,036 people died as of July 13, 2020. What are you saying, Lord? In Hebrews 12, verse 25, it says that, See, see that you refuse not him that speaketh. What are you telling us today? What are you saying, Lord? The Lord has many things to say to us. We will just focus on two things in our Bible study today, based on Hebrews Chapter 12, verses 25 to 28. First, do not refuse him that has been speaking in the past and present. And secondly, we have received a kingdom that cannot be moved. So what has been God saying then and now? Let us review and meditate verses 25 to 26. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refuse him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him, him 
that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he had promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. God is saying in these verses that we should not refuse him, God who speaks. God alone can shake the earth and heaven. Know that this is that this verse is in the present tense and imperative form, meaning it is a command for us to obey now. God is telling us, in fact, warning us, do not refuse or reject Him and what He is saying now. Why should we not refuse Him and what He is saying? The answer is in verse 25. That is, those who refuse Him, God did not escape. He further warns us, the more we will not escape too if we turn away from Him who speaks from heaven. When studying the Bible, it is helpful to ask questions. The Holy Spirit will lead us to answers in the Scripture too. The basic rule of biblical interpretation is Scripture explains Scripture. As we do not have monopoly of the Holy Spirit and the truth, it is also helpful to compare notes with others after our Bible reading and study. So we ask, what is that we should escape from? What is the escape? Are we already experiencing God's promised shaking now, considering, considering the disasters happening around the world, like the COVID-19. I encourage you to watch again our past videos on comforting one another, especially part two, dated June 24, 2020. Just search Evangel Life YouTube. In part two of Comfort One Another, we studied in great details 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 to 13. We learned that the part of Scripture also talks about the day of the Lord. That refers to the great tribulation, which culminates to the second coming of the Lord Jesus with his saints to judge and rule the earth. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 2 to 5, it says that the day of the Lord is coming like a thief in the night, that unbelievers will not escape it because they are drunk and sleeping in the darkness of the night in the world. But the believers, we will escape because God has not appointed us to wrath, having received salvation through our Lord Jesus, who died for us, so whether we are alive or dead, we should live together with Him. That describes the rapture, the escape from God's wrath and judgment. So part one of Comfort One Another is our Bible study on the coming of the Lord, also known as the rapture. What do you think? Are we already experiencing the shaking of the Lord as described in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26, or in Matthew 24, which speaks of wars and rumors of wars, famines, and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places? Our main text tells us we are not in the shaking of the great tribulation up to the second coming of the Lord, because it clearly states that shaking is still 
a future event. This part of the Bible we are studying tonight, as well as Matthew 24, are scriptures for the future great tribulation and the second coming. And most Bible scholars and teachers agree on this. We ought not to fear the Antichrist who will dumb souls to hell because he will force people to take the mark of the beast, which may wrongly speculate to be the COVID-19 vaccination with microchips. That has brought fear to many people. This is like looking to the Antichrist rather than looking to Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Do you think... God is unreasonable and unfair to bring people to hell just because of a vaccination with microchip. I am not saying here to take or not to take whatever that vaccine is. I am echoing what Revelation chapter 13 says. That mandatory mark of the Antichrist will happen in the great tribulation and those who take it will dumb their souls not because of the mark of the beast alone but because they will knowingly believe obey and worship the antichrist sin and its consequences are the reasons of the present devastations and sufferings before us. There is good news of escape from the sinful world and its future shaking or judgment. God is saying, refuse not Jesus and his word. Jesus is alive and his blood in heaven is speaking forgiveness to those who would repent from sins and accept Him as Lord and Savior. The good command of God is not to refuse Jesus. God Himself, who took the form of man and paid our sins by dying on the cross for us. Jesus is until now offering eternal life, salvation by grace. That leads us to verse 28 of Hebrews chapter 12, which says, We have received a kingdom that cannot be moved or shaken. Verse 28, Wherefore we receive, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Hear what God is saying. We can escape the coming shaking of both heaven and earth in the great tribulation to the second coming of Jesus by having His grace. He says, let us have grace. Brothers and sisters, we, the church, are in the season of grace. It is salvation by grace. This is the season that believers of Jesus are delivered from the power of darkness of this world and are translated to the kingdom of God. In Romans 14 verse 17 tells us, what the kingdom of God is all about. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Hallelujah. Dear Church, we have received the kingdom of God which cannot be moved not by the sins and consequences of sins in this present world. Therefore, we live 
in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Sin corrupts and hurt everyone and everything including nature, God's creation. What we see happening are the manifestations of the law of sowing and reaping. What you sow, you will reap. The world sows sin and has been reaping its bitter and deadly fruits of fear, hatred, lawlessness, greed, violence, murder, and every immorality, idolatry, and perversion. Even the whole creation and environment, the lands, the air, and the seas, as well as the animals, are affected by the sins of the world. God's creation has been abused, misused, and tampered with by man's greed and lust to exalt himself and denying the existence of God. Satan is behind all this, being the God of this world. The world is controlled by Satan, so it has nothing to do with the true, living, almighty God. Satan is trying to manipulate people's minds to exclude God and radically change people and destroy nations. Satan is trying to set up a one-world government where he will deceive people to worship him. While we are in this world, but we are not of this world, soon and very soon, our King Jesus is coming to meet us in the air so and to take us home where he has been preparing our mansions in heaven. So, hold loosely and then let go. Let go of the things of this world which are temporary anyway. Money, material things, fame, pleasure, Satan has access and hold of these things in the world. And if you continue to have strong desire for the things in the world, Satan will have a hold on you, take you captive. These things in the world are failing and crumbling until God shakes it and removes it completely as Revelation 11 verse 15 says, that the kingdom of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Maranatha, Jesus is coming again. Thank you for joining our Bible studies. Kindly pass on to others our videos at YouTube Evangel Life. In these challenging times, let us promote, share Jesus, and the good news of salvation. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we are so grateful for revealing yourself to us forgiving our sins and giving us the kingdom of God which cannot be moved. Thank you, Jesus, for your great sacrifice and eternal life you provide us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading us to the truth and empowering us to be effective witnesses of Jesus. We give all praises and glory to you the true and living God. Amen. Praise God. Let us end a Bible study by the song. Let us come to the Father. Amen.
Before the world began You were on his mind In every tear you cried It's precious in his eyes Because of his great love He gave his only son